Welcome to Rage X Mods, the channel that's dedicated to bringing you step-by-step -step tutorials and ROM reviews. Today I'm going to be doing a full review of the ROM MIUI. I have to admit I was a little hesitant about this ROM because of its obvious similarities to iOS, but I took the plunge and I've been pleasantly surprised by how much I like it. The first thing that I want to address is the fact that the ROM comes with no app drawer, which is one of the few reasons why I don't care for iOS. I find that with no app drawer, your home screens can become very chaotic and a mess to organize, especially with 130 apps. Speaking of apps, you should know right off the bat that this ROM did not ask me to sign into my Google account and restore. I had to manually go into account and sync settings to sign in. Because of this, I was not able to restore my apps through Google. If you want to backup and restore your apps, you'll need to download a backup app such as My Backup Pro or Titanium Backup. You'll need to make a backup before you do the installation and then do a restoral afterwards. The beauty of this ROM though is the fact that it's so customizable and with different launcher installed you can have the best of both worlds. You can make it function as much like iOS as you want or make it function as much like Android as you want. Once I realized this after playing with it, I began to realize the true value of this ROM. The ease of customization has never reached this level before on the Droid X, which I'll get into in just a minute. First, I want to start out with the lock screen, which is also customizable within the theme manager. There's actually a bit of functionality built into the lock screen, which is always a nice feature. If you drag down the middle, it simply unlocks. If you drag down on the phone, it brings you to the dialer. Similarly, if you drag down on the message icon, it brings you to the messaging app. If you double tap on the clock, it opens the music app right on the lock screen. Another nice feature is if you hold down the home button, the MIUI flashlight comes on for as long as you hold down the button. Now we'll get into the home screens and the basic features. You can see that the status bar has a toggle feature built in, which is becoming a standard thing right now, but always nice to have. You can even hold down one of the toggles to bring up its full settings menu. To personalize your home screen, just like in iOS, if you hold an icon and move it around, the icons will move according to where you drag it. If you drag it to the garbage can, it will ask you if you want to uninstall it. This alleviates the need to delete your apps from an app manager in the market as long as you stick with the stock launcher. You can also hold on an icon with one finger and swipe the screen with another. If you pinch the screen with two fingers, you get a screen preview where you can move home screens around as well as designate any one of them as your main home screen. This is also where you can add more screens. As for the widgets and folders, you can hold down on a blank spot and you'll be presented with options at the bottom. Simply drag whatever you want onto the home screen of your choice. Moving on, we'll get into theming now. This is easily one of the most impressive features about this ROM. When you open the theme manager, you'll see local theme, which is the themes that you've downloaded, and you'll see online themes where you can download a lot more. If you pick a theme to look at, you can then browse screenshots of it even at full screen. At the bottom, it tells you what components have been themed, like icons, status bars, and so on. We'll hit download. You can now see it's downloading over 3G, which will take a couple of minutes. Now that it's done, we can hit the apply button. You can already see the theme has taken effect. The status bar has changed along with the toggles. Everything listed down here will also be themed. The first time you hit the home button, it'll take a second to load. Most components on this one have been themed, even the dialer. Theming is nothing new for rooted users, but the fact that you can mix and match, that's what stands out for this ROM. If I decide that I don't like certain elements of a theme, I can check off what I don't want and hit apply. Now I can have just the part of the theme I like. Another option would be to hit Edit Theme, which is my current theme, and I'll have a list of things I can change independently. If I hit Status Bar, it'll give me the list of themes I've downloaded and show me just what the status bar looks like. Hit Apply and it'll change just that. Let's move on to the dialer now. Something I've missed from the Blur dialer that this ROM has is T9. This allows you to type in a name on the dial pad and it'll bring up the choices that match in your contact list. The same is true if you type in a number. At the bottom, there's also a contacts button that brings up your full list. The music app that it comes with has some nice features and it's very well laid out. You can see it has artist, folders, search, playlist, albums, 
and all songs with these big nice buttons. You can hit play down here and then on the title and it goes to the music player. Tap on the lyrics and you can see the equalizer moving. If you tap on the more songs button, you can see more titles from that artist. Tap the center again and you get your seek slider along with a five band equalizer with presets to choose from as well. You can see the app streams the lyrics too, which is nice. The MIUI camera app does work, even though when you open it, it appears not to. For the time being, on your first camera session, you'll have to go into picture size and set it to 3264 by 2448 and back out to see it working. There's quite a few options in here. You have color effect, settings, burst, silence, anti-shake, screen shutter, video, and delay snap. The video camera works as well and you have the options of settings, color effect, and screen shutter. The file explorer that this ROM comes with is quite impressive as well. The main screen has big buttons and the options of music, videos, pics, themes, docs, zips, APKs, miscellaneous, and favorites. At the bottom you have your SD card info with a nice color graph illustrating how much of each type of file you have. You can tap on SD card to view it in the traditional folder view. It even has a built-in FTP server application. Moving on, this ROM comes preloaded with the new and revamped market. If you're not familiar with it, it's very well laid out with some nice categories to sort what you're looking for. It also comes with a movie store and a bookstore. If you want the new market on another ROM, you can download the APK and install it on any phone, I believe running Froyo or higher. Just do a Google search for the phrase download market 3.0.26. Another nice tool that this ROM comes with is a built-in backup app. You can backup contacts, SMS, settings, and system program data. You can also save user apps and app data such as games. From the looks of this, you'll need to make an account with MIUI to use this feature. Just to reiterate the fact that you can make this iOS looking ROM look and feel like Android again, I wanted to show you guys my setup and how to get it there. Load up either ADW or Launcher Pro from the market. Now go into themes and look for the theme label Android 2.3 from the online theme section. Download it and apply. You can see here that even the icons that aren't themed now look like Android because there's no background applied. This ROM comes with 1% battery increments built in which you can enable in the battery settings. It also has a nifty little screen capture feature built in. To do that just hold down the menu button and the volume down button until you hear the shutter sound. Then you can go into the root of your SD card and tap on the MIUI folder, then Screen Capture folder. That's it for the UI portion of this review. Now I'm going to talk about the settings menu. There are plenty of options to make this ROM fit you. Sound settings is just your basic options for ringtones and such. The display settings has screen rotation and CRT animation settings. Themes brings you to the theme manager. Wallpaper settings lets you choose separate wallpapers for your home screen and lock screen. Launcher settings has wallpaper scrolling, transition effects, and a few other options. You have font settings available as well as toggle settings. Toggle settings will allow you to do compact or full page. This is what compact looks like and you can scroll over for more. Personal passwords allows you to set all kinds of passwords, not just for the lock screen, but for things like dialer, messaging, notes, and do not disturb mode. You have the general GPS, security and privacy, account and sync settings. You also have a do not disturb mode which allows you to have a blacklist for callers that are not welcomed. You also have a block unknown feature which I think every phone should come with. There's also a backup data and settings menu. Under the system tab you have all of your network settings including a tethering menu. Portable hotspot is not listed here for some reason but there is a USB tethering option which I never was able to get working. This may be a bug that has not been worked out yet. If you go into battery settings, you can set the alarm level for low battery as well as change the indicator to show 1% increments. There are settings to change the LED color, SD card settings, PC and sync options, button settings, and dock options. Under programs, you have the usual development settings, manage applications, and you can even set your default choices for browser, launcher, gallery, text reader, dialer, SMS, and music player. After that, you have settings for calls, messaging, Gmail, Google Talk, browser, and calendar. Like I said before, more than enough settings to satisfy. There are two things that I can think of right offhand that are broken. The option to change the boot animation and the recovery option in the power menu. You can still get into recovery, but you'll need to use ROM Manager to do that. As for battery life, 
I've gotten as high as 12 hours from it and as low as 8 hours. This is with average to heavy usage and running on an extended battery. Unfortunately, with CM7 based ROMs, the battery life will not be very good until they find a fix for it. Something else that I'd like to mention is that from what I hear, the MIUI team is excellent at taking care of bugs. This ROM was released for Droid X just one week ago and it's already very usable as a daily driver. New updates are released on ROM Manager every Friday and you can view the change log on MIUI's site. I'll be putting up a tutorial video on how to install this ROM hopefully next weekend. If you can't wait that long, visit the site that I have linked in the description to get the zip file. I highly recommend you try this ROM out. I believe the pros definitely outweigh the cons and I would even venture to say that this is the future of ROMs for the Droid X as far as customization goes. With that being said, I can't wait to see what's on the horizon for the Droid X. If you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe for more ROM reviews and step-by-step -step tutorials.